Wigan Athletic are a team that is stuck in a rot. They've been up and down like a yo-yo between the Championship and League One for the last 10 years and last season was no different as they once again got relegated. Once esteemed FA Cup winners, now a mid-table League One side. Guys, we need to help them out. So today that's exactly what I'm going to do by becoming their brand new manager. And not only am I going to get them back into the Premier League, I'm going to win them the Champions League to crown them the world's best club. Now ladies and gents, this is the team that we've loaded into with Wigan Athletic and I know right now it's not the best formation in the world and these players playing out of position but this team has got a lot of potential. For starters, it's a very young team for a League One side. There's only four players out of the 29 in the squad that are 30 years old or above. That's ridiculous when you think about it. And when you look at their highest rated players, majority of them are actually in their mid-20s which is always a positive sign. And on top of that, there's some players that we can definitely try to build this team around like Sam Tickle, our goalie. He's 21, 63 rated and guys, he's got a great name. Sam Tickle, what a name. There's also Taylor Asgard. He's 21 years old, already 64 overall. This guy can turn into a little bit of a beast. And there's 19 year old centre back Charlie Hughes. He's 64 overall as well and honestly, I've got a lot of faith that we can get him to the Premier League. However, as you can see, we've got a lot of players on loan to us right now and on top of that, there is a little bit of a contract situation that we do need to sort out so those are unfortunately the cons but in fairness the budget for league one isn't bad at all four million in total so we can definitely sort the contract situation out and if we choose to definitely have no issue bringing a couple of loan players in on a permanent deal so all in all ladies and gents whilst right now it doesn't look that good on paper we've already been through the squad up and we've already seen the potential this team's got if we set it up right and i think setting this team up in the 4-3-3 attacking variation is absolutely the right route to go down but this time i'm using the kick and rush tactical vision a part of me really wants to use the gig and press but my brain's telling me the kick and rush is the right route to go down so i'm just going to trust my brain over me gut this time and after messing around with the team a bit this is the starting 11 i'm comfortable going into season one with that's before we spend any of that four million in our budget but to be fair a bulk of that four mil is probably going to go on making a couple of these loan plays permanent plays at wigan athletic i mean a couple of them are already our highest rated plays so bringing them in on a permanent deal kind of does make sense in these three plays straight away that I want to sign up Liam Shaw being one of them, Martial Godo being the second and of course Charlie Kalman from QPR being the third. They're all pretty young, they've all got a decent market value so they're not too expensive and most importantly they all look like future absolute monsters so you better believe I'm signing these three up. And just like that guys for 2.1 million in total I've made my first three signings as Wigan Athletics manager. Well that's not all I'm doing in this window ladies and gents, all six of these players are getting loaned out primarily Primarily because these aren't really plays I want in the starting 11. So whilst these guys are on loan, the plays I want in the starting 11 will actually play. And to be fair, after renewing contracts and sorting the coaching system out, we've only got 64k left in our budget. So that's our transfer window done anyway. So the big question going into season one, guys, have I made the right call signing these three youngsters up on a permanent deal? Or have I really just shot myself in the foot? Well, I can't answer that question just yet. But what I can say is the improvement in some of these players this year has been absolutely ridiculous man i reckon we've had a very successful year and to be fair looking at the stats i know that there's not many players getting 20 or 30 goals but a lot of our players have got more than 10 goal contributions this season six to be exact i really couldn't guess where we finished this year to be honest the team looks absolutely insane but the stats don't really back it up i reckon we may have just hit the playoffs but i was completely wrong we are champions of league one and we are bouncing straight back up to the championship with wigan athletic i'm actually Actually gobsmacked at that those stats were so misleading as for the FA Cup we got quite unlucky because we drew up against Brentford in round three where we got knocked out and we got knocked out in round two at the energy drink competition losing 3-0 to Leicester but we've done the impossible ladies and gents we've won the Bristol Street Motors Trophy so we're going up to the championship as champions of League One and as the champions of the Bristol Street Motors competition beautiful god these stats were really misleading weren't they we've won the League One title and the Bristol Street Motors trophy yet it doesn't even look like we've barely made it into the playoffs and to be honest going into the championship i feel like a better left wing is all we need jones is by a mile the weakest link in the team and he's almost 30 years old now but with us getting that promotion money this shouldn't be any issue in the slightest the best thing is guys we've only been in charge of wigan for one year we've got a long way to go before we're calling them the world's best club meaning our journey with them has only just begun but before we get to season two of wigan if you're enjoying this video so far make sure you leave the big Big ol' thumbs up and smash.
smash that subscribe button. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and with your help, we can hit it before the end of this year. But here we go, ladies and gents. Season 2 of Wigan Athletic, and we are officially back in the championship. But my biggest objective this season is to make sure that they don't yo-yo straight back down to League 1. However, as we've established, this team is pretty damn good. I can't really see that happening, but I do not want to take any chances with that. Now, at the end of last season, I said I wanted a better left winger than Jordan Jones. I mean, he's the weakest link in the team by a country mile, but what if I told you I could replace him without spending a penny? And I'm not talking about free agents either. I'm talking about Malvin Peters. He was in our youth academy when I first took charge of Wigan Athletic. He was only 15. I didn't really want to tell you guys about him either, just in case he turned out to be a flop. But as you can see, he's 68 overall. It's 16 years old, got an insane potential by the looks of it. So instead of spending money on a replacement winger, I say we just chuck him into the team and see what he can do. And just like that, guys, there's no weak links anywhere really in the team, but that raises a bigger problem that it actually solves. Because even after we've renewed players' contracts and sorted the coaching system out, we've got 8 million to spend in. Honestly, I've got no idea where to put it. I mean, when you look at the ages of our highest rated players, they're all still pretty damn young. I feel like if we are to spend this 8 million, we've got to be incredibly ruthless. But after a lot of thinking, I've made my mind up. I'm replacing Jason Kerr at the back. He's 27, 70 overall. I mean, he's a very, very good player. But if we are to spend that money somewhere, I feel like a better centre-back's the right route to go down. And Sean Clare is also on the chopping block. I mean, he's 27 as well. He's 67 rated. His status says he's got something special. But honestly, I feel like we can bring in someone way better with the money we've got. And I'm glad to confirm, guys, and bang on the money. 23-year-old fullback from Argentina, Brian Aguirre. 70 overall. His contract's running out. I mean, he's a lot younger and a lot better. This one's a no-brainer. And following him is Jacob Grease. He's 23, 72 overall. He's two ratings higher and four years younger than Jason Kerr. I mean, this one just speaks for itself, really, doesn't it? And ladies and gents, we've just spent 5.8 million making both of these players Wigan Athletic players. It may have been ruthless, but it's absolutely what we needed to do to improve the squad. I mean, just look at the state of this team for goodness sake guys what you've got to bear in mind majority of these players are in their mid 20s at best so the amount of potential it's actually got is staggering let's just put it this way guys if we are actually in the bottom three come the end of season two i will officially end the video there but thankfully i don't have to because we are smack bang mid table almost 15th in the championship at the very least guys we aren't yo-yoing straight back down to league one but as you can see, we've got our work cut out for us in Season 3 to get ourselves from 15th into the playoffs. But let's move on from that for a sec. Look at the FA Cup run we had. We made it to the quarterfinals before succumbing to Chelsea. That is actually insane. Fair play, Wigan. We couldn't replicate our FA Cup run, though, in the Carabao Cup as Fleetwood Bloody Town knocked us out in Round 2. And at least the stats this year do look way better. 20-1 for Charlie Kalman, 9-7 for Liam Shaw, and 8-4 and for Martial Godo. Disappointing season, though, for Malvin Peters, four goals in 40 games. I mean, he is still very young. Hopefully, the experience he's got this year will definitely come in clutch next season for him. I also have to say, guys, the improvement this season is pretty on par with last season's improvement, but it does bring me to what we have to do next year. I'm thinking a stronger goalie than Tickle and a better centre than Smith is all that stands in our way next season from jumping from 15th in the league to the playoffs. I mean, it's definitely a tall ass one way or the other, but I definitely feel like we've got the quality in this team to pull that off once we make those two signings. And guys, we are starting our third season in charge of Wigan Athletic with an absolute bang. I just spent 7.8 million on Alvaro Aceves. He's only 21. He's already 74 overall. He's showing great potential. I feel like whilst this is a big amount of money to spend on one player, it's definitely going to be worth it. Now, you could make the argument we didn't need a new keeper. Sam Tickle's only 23, 73 rated as well, but let me show you why that's not the case. Look at his development plan. It'll take him 50 weeks to become a better keeper man, and that's at the bare minimum. Whereas our new goalkeeper is already 74 rated, it'll take him 7 weeks to become a 75 rated keeper. It is literally a no-brainer. And yes, this means that Smith keeps his spot in the starting 11, but to be fair, he is still growing quite nicely, as you can see. Not at a fast rate like our new goalkeeper, but he is still going off. I feel like Season 3 is going to be the season of extremes. We're either going to do really goddamn well in the championship, or we're going to do even worse than we did 
last season. But honestly, I'm inclined to believe we're going to do way better. We've got a very, very good goalkeeper. Our defense has massively improved from last year. And to be fair, so is the rest of the team. So there's no reason why we can't at least jump from 15th to the top six. And guys, that's exactly what we've done. We're in the playoffs alongside Leeds United, West Brom and Burnley. And we're going to Wembley, ladies and gents. We've beaten West Brom 2-1 on aggregate where we played Burnley in the final. This truly is going to be interesting. Who's going to come out on top? Wigan. Oh, oh my God. Wigan Athletic. We've annihilated Burnley 3-0 in the final. Yeah, we definitely deserve to go off. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just to see if we were comfortably in the playoffs whilst Burnley just about scraped it. But our success doesn't stop there. Look at where we finished in the FA Cup. Granted, we lost to Tottenham Hotspur in the semi-finals, but we made the semi-finals as a championship side. Now, yes, we did get knocked out by Peterborough in round one of the Carabao Cup. I feel like if we ought to win a domestic competition, it's going to be the FA Cup, isn't it? As for the stats, ladies and gents, just look at it. 26-2 for Kalman, 14 goals for Melvin Peters, 11-6 for Martial Godo in 8 and 10 for Asgard. Guys, I'm very confident going into season 4. In our first season in the Premier League, we just need a couple of better midfielders, maybe a better right wing in. I honestly feel like this Wigan Athletic team is good to go. But on the flip side, a lot's changed since the last time Wigan were in the Premier League. For God's sake, Tottenham Hotspur have won the title this year. I feel like it's going to be a very, very interesting first season back in the top flight of English football. But here we are, guys. Season 4 with Wigan Athletic, and we've officially got them back into the Premier League. Let's just hope by the end of this season, that's not where we finish. And with promotion comes that promotion money, 52 million to be exact. And we already went over last season where we want to improve it. So we're not going to waste any time. Let's get straight into it. Now, the first player I'm going for is actually Alfie Divine. He's 21, 74 rated. PSG have got him up on the loan list, but I don't want him on a loan. I want him on a permanent deal. And guys, that's exactly what I did. And he only cost us 8 million altogether. And following him is you. Yuri Tielemans from Aston Villa is 29, 82 overall. He's got a ton of Premier League experience, which is exactly what we need. And his contract's running out. And we all know how much I love a bargain at this point. And guys, that's exactly what we got is we only had to spend 22 million on him. And that leaves us 15 mil in our budget. Now remember, not only do we need a better right winger, we need to sort players' contracts out and we need to sort the coaching system out. So for our final sign of this transfer window, we're going to go look in that free agents list. And look who I found, Silas. He's a 27 year old winger he can play up top and on the wing he's 77 rated and he's free this one's a win-win all round and there he is in the Wigan Athletic shit. We just need to give in to a right winger and he's good to go. But ladies and gents, after sorting the contracts out, bringing Silas into the team and sorting the coaching system out, we've got three mil left in our budget. That's our window done. Well, Silas's training has just completed. Is he going to go up in overall? Yes, he does. 78 rated. Lovely stuff. But now that that's all taken care of, here is our Wigan Athletic lineup for our first season back in the Prem. And obviously, it's not the strongest team in the world, but I definitely feel feel like we're safe from getting relegated. I mean, when you look at the highest rated players in our team, majority of them aren't even close to hitting 30 years old. So if you think the team looks good now, wait till the end of this season. And for the most part, guys, I was actually bang on. Look at some of the improvements in this team, especially our winger, Peters, 84 rated. Now, he's not even 20 years old yet, for God's sake. He was also our highest goal contributor this season. 17 goals and 6 assists in 44 games. Man, we've got a beast in our hands. We've got to talk about his market value though 77 and a half mil it's gone up 181 percent this year alone if we get a big offer for him it's going to be very hard to turn it down the thing is as well we've yet to see how this team's done in the league the stats did look pretty decent but honestly they're very misleading as we've already seen but you know what i'll definitely take this 14th in the prem for our first season back in it nowhere near the bottom three that is a massive dub and we've once again done insane in the fa cup making it to the quarters once again getting knocked out by chelsea but honestly the fa cup and Wigan Athletic's a better love story than friggin' Twilight. But the Carabao Cup certainly isn't as the Blades knock us out in round two. But looking at this team, guys, I feel like to get us from the bottom half of the table to the top half, we just need to improve this defense because the goalkeeper sound now, the midfield's by a mile the best part.
part of the team. And the front three is pretty decent too. It's just the defense letting this team down. But that is indeed very budget dependent, which brings me back to Malvin Peters. If we get a good enough offer for him next year, I don't feel like we've got any choice but to accept it. But in fairness, our budget for season five is decent. 50 million to be exact. I don't feel like we have to sell him anytime soon. But I said I wanted better defenders and that's exactly what I'm getting. Fulham's Calvin Bassey is the first on the list. He's 27, 81 rated. He's not worth that much. I reckon we can get a pretty good deal for this guy. And next on the list is Amar Dedic from Werder Bremen. He's 24, 82 rated. I've actually never heard of this guy, but he looks solid. I'm going to give him a chance. Unfortunately, we hit a roadblock as we were only able to sign Amar Dedic for 35.8 million. This is because Calvin Bassey was too expensive to sign alongside our new right back. So out of the two, I did go for the fullback because honestly, he just looks like a better player. Now that leaves us with 11 mil in our budget. Obviously, we can't go on to buy world-class players with that kind of money, but we can see what's on offer on that free agents list. And we've arguably found someone better than Calvin Bassey. Nathan Ake, he's 32 granted, but he's 83 overall and he's won everything that you can win at club level. Like, we definitely need someone of his caliber in the team. And you ain't gonna believe this, Andrea Cambiasso is a free agent. Granted, he's a left wing back, but we can easily sort that out. He's 27, 82 rated. We are getting two absolutely incredible plays for absolutely nothing. I can't believe how good that transfer window was, guys. Look at the state of this team now that our defense is completely sorted out. Guys, my expectations this season have skyrocketed. I am definitely expecting a top 10 finish. There's literally no reason why we can't get it now. And we've done it, ladies and gents. We are top six in the Prem. We've got Europa League football with Wigan Athletic in season six. And we came so close in the FA Cup, man. We made the final just losing to Liverpool. And we also made the semis of the Carabao Cup, losing to United. Guys, we came so close in both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Fair play. And just look at the stats as well. 20 and 2 for Kalman, 20 and 7 for Malvin Peters, 12 and 9 for Tielemans, and 9 and 8 for Liam Shaw. I can't lie, guys. I am proud of Wigan Athletic. Not only have they smashed it this season, but look at the improvement in some of these players. Our goalkeeper's now 85 rated, for God's sake. What a baller. But I think next year we do pull the trigger on selling Melvin Peters. He's worth for over 120 million, for God's sake, meaning we can get up as to 150, meaning with that kind of money, we can definitely pull off a madness in season six. But then again, do we have to sell him? Because we've got 169 million in our budget. And with that money, we can definitely get this team to the point where we're not just competing in the Premier League or the Europa League anymore. We're going for it. Don't get me wrong, Malvin Peters is worth a lot of goddamn cheddar cheese, but I feel like he's a better asset to us in the team than away from it. I mean, looking at the team, we just need a better striker, a better right winger, and maybe a better centre back than Ake, because he is getting on a bit now. Apart from that, we are good to go in every other position. So starting with the striker, I'm going for Genoa's Kareem Kanate. He's only 24, 83 rated. I mean, he's definitely better than Kalman, so this one's a no-brainer. But he proved to be very costly, 50 million pounds to be exact. But we've just found a bargain, ladies and gents. Marcus Edwards, 29, 84 rated. His contract's running out, meaning we'll get him for about 30 odd million. But as it turns out, I was completely wrong. We only had to spend 28 million to get Marcus Edwards to join us on a four year deal. And that leaves us 80 million to spend on one more player. But we can't just bring any old player into the team. We've got to bring someone in who's going to elevate the team to the next level. And I feel like I know just the player to do that. I'm talking about Colombian centre back Piero Insape. He's 26, 86 rated. And for a centre back, he is absolutely rapid. 89 pace. Yeah, you better believe I'm signing this guy. But believe me, guys, he was very expensive. 70 million on the dot is what we had to spend to get him to join us. But I definitely believe signing Piero Insape is the right move to take Wigan Athletic to that next level. I just hope I'm right, guys, because we're now officially in the Europa League in Group G alongside Fiorentina, a team whose name I can't pronounce, and Aberdeen. But if last season with a weaker side than this, we can get to the FA Cup final, the Carabao Cup semi-final, and finish inside the top six in the Prem, who knows what we're capable of this year? Well, apparently we're not capable of all that much. We are eighth in the Prem at the end of this season. We were one point outside of the top six, man. That is actually gut-wrenching. And what makes it worse, the bottle jobs have won the league by eight points. Honestly, this season can get in the bin already. But we've this time won the FA Cup beating Wolves in the final 2-1. It's a bad 
about freaking time we did this. This has been coming since the very start of this video. But we couldn't replicate this in the Carabao Cup as we crashed out in round four against West Ham on pens. But in the Europa League, it's a great start. Four wins and two draws from six games, undefeated, cruising to the round of 16. And that's where we demolished PSV 5-3. And then we just kept past Fiorentina 2-1. And we've beaten Napoli 1-0 in the semis. Guys, we're playing Marseille in the final. And we've done it. We've smashed Marseille 4-0 in the Europa League final. Somehow, after finishing 8th in the Prem, we've been bailed out by winning the Europa League. We've got Champions League football next year. Maybe that's why we were doing so poorly in the Premier League. We were so focused on the Europa League and the FA Cup that we just completely neglected the league. But looking at this team, I've got to be honest, that's not really an excuse because, quite honestly, this is easily a top-4 side regardless. And look at the stats, guys. Peters with 34 goal contributions, 17 for Marcus Edwards, 16 for Kanate, 29 for Yuri Tielemans. What a signing he's turned out to be. Now, yes, 8th in the Prem wasn't what we wanted in the Premier League, obviously, but we've won the Europa League and the FA Cup. I feel like we can let this slide purely because of how successful we were in other competitions. But that gives me problems for next year, because where do I actually improve this team? I mean, we've got Greaves and Dedic, who are definitely weak links, but are they even weak links? They're both 84 rated do we even need to improve those positions one way or the other though guys we've got to come up with a plan we've won the europa league and the fa cup so we're gonna get a lot of goddamn money and with us being in the champions league for the first time there's not a chance now we're gonna get that amount of money and not spend it but guys i feel like i've been shafted here we've only got 160 million to spend bear in mind we've just won the europa league and fa cup and now we've got less money to work with this year than we did last year we're gonna flat it board of directors what you're playing at. So the budget's officially settled this debate. No player in the starting 11 is going to get replaced. We're just going to focus that money on the squad depth we'll go on the bench. Now, for the most part, our depth is actually pretty sound. We just need a couple of defenders, maybe a goalkeeper and a better midfielder. And whilst we don't have the budget I thought we were going to get, we can definitely get all these positions sorted out with 160 million. And starting with the centre mid, I went for Carlos Belabra. He's 25, 82 rated and he cost us 33 million. As for the centre-back, we finally got Calvin Bassey, 29 years old now, 82 rated, and he cost us 25 million. As for the goalkeeper, I'm going for Jay Gorton, not even 30 yet, 80 rated, can defo do a job as a second choice keeper. And following him is Matty Cash from Villa, he's 31, 80 rated, his contract's running out and I'm not even going to say it because you know exactly what I'm thinking. And that concludes our business for season 7, as for 29.4 million, we brought both of these players in on three-year deals. But our business this season season is just picking up as we are in the Champions League for the first time in Group G alongside Sevilla, Stad Rene and Ajax and honestly I definitely feel like we should be topping this group. I mean we're off to a good start into the Prem at least three games in and we are already in the top four. Let's just hope we can keep this going. I mean we should do anyway. Look at the state of this team ladies and gents. There's legitimately no excuse this season why we can't get top four in the Prem at the very least. But this time we've done better than just top four. We've won the Premier League by two points in the end we beat manchester city to it finally with the best team in england but we lost to the bottle jobs in the community shield final they beat us on penalties as well come on wigan we did however win the fa cup once again beating west brom to do it so that's the double secure but nottingham forest knock us out of the energy drink competition in round four and we lost the super cup to manchester city so far guys it's been a bit 50 50 hasn't it when it comes to winning trophies but in the Champions League, as I expected, we have topped Group G pretty easily. And we drew against Real Madrid in the round of 16 and managed to get past them. If we're beating Madrid, we can beat bloody anybody. And also, Bromby IF made it through to the quarters, beating Juve 4-3 on aggregate. Oh, please let us draw against them. We didn't draw Bromby IF. Instead, we drew Dynamo Kiev and absolutely dismantled them. We could be playing against Liverpool, Napoli or Manchester City, who wiped the floor with Barcelona. Oh my God, please tell me we are facing them. Thankfully, we avoided them. We played Napoli and we'd beaten them 3-1 in aggregate. We're playing Liverpool in the final who beat Man City 2-1. Oh my God, I don't know whether that's worse than playing Man City or not. You're telling me this team beat Manchester City? I'm not buying that for a second. I mean, these good players in it, don't get me wrong, but they've got Kovacic in their team. He's got to be about 35 at this point. And just look at the stats, man. 39-7 and 7 for Peters, 15-15 and 15 for Divine, and all the rest of them put a right shift in. We have had such a good season 
stats wise. And ladies and gents, for the first time in Wigan's history, this is the team going into the UCL final. And honestly, I've got a very, very good feeling we're going to smash Liverpool. I mean, look at our midfield, for God's sake. They've got Kovacic in their midfield. We're going to wipe the goddamn floor with them. And up to this point, we've been very successful with Wigan Athletic, but we can take that to the next level if we beat Liverpool in the UCL final to win Wigan their first ever Champions League trophy. From Marcus Edwards coming forward on the ball. Now we've found Kanate. Oh, that touch from Kanate. Shot. He's still got the ball, though. Fair play to him. We're coming down the right-hand side. Still on the ball. He's got so much pace. Tell you what, let's have a shot from distance. Okay, that... What the hell was that? Shaw is on the ball. We kept him from season one. And he's found Peters. He's been here since season two. Look at him go. Oh, my God. Can we make this 1-0? Nope. Oh, my God. He's at the post. Rodrigo's coming forward for Liverpool. The first chance of the game for them. They found... I don't know who that is, but he's been dispossessed so easily there. Peters is coming forward on the ball once again. He's definitely going to be so important to us if we want to win this. Because look at... Oh, my God. Look at him go. He'll chop inside. Cut inside. Hit it. Oh, no. He took too long with the shot. Here comes Rodrigo once again. Liverpool's best player so far. That really isn't saying anything, though, because they have been pretty poor. I mean, look at that. Here comes Marcus Edwards. He's on the right-hand side of the pitch. Okay, cut this back. Oh, that's just shocking. We've still got the ball somehow. Tielemans is on it. He's found Edwards on the right-hand side. Once again, we're going to cut inside. Kanate is there. Can we... Oh, God, above. We just can't do it in the final third. Here come Liverpool, though. They've got a great chance here. And, oh, my God, we got away with that. How the hell is this still a nil-nil game? Both Hopefully we can change that as we're coming forward on the right-hand side with Dead H. He's ran straight into a brick wall. What are we playing at? Benasar's gone short with Liverpool's corner. Can we tackle him? No, we can't. Can we get the ball away? Jesus, we got away with that. Honestly, in real life, Liverpool are one of the best teams in the world. Undisputed. You can't get away from that. But in this game, they cannot finish their freaking dinners. But here comes Tielemans. Can we get a shot? No, we can't quite get there. We've got them on the back foot, though. Tielemans, can we spot that ball? My days. Tielemans, come on, man. I know you're 33, but you've got to be doing better than that. Oh, and here comes Rodrigo. That is a phenomenal save. Oh, my God. And here we come on the counter-attack. We're trying to find Peters, and we've just found him. Hit that. Oh, for God's sake, Liverpool, man. You're not that good at the back. We are now entering extra time of this Champions League final, but here comes Peters. A rare chance for him. Can he put it away this time? Thank you. Why did we have to wait until extra time to be able to do something like that? Malvin Peters, the Dutchman with the least Dutch-like name I've ever heard in my my life puts us 1-0 up in the UCL final. He had so much space to run into after taking Liverpool's fullback out and he makes no mistake about smashing that into the back of the net this time. Now this is normally the part where I do some stupid mistake and we can see directly after kickoff but I can assure you guys that is not going to happen this time. I'll be honest as soon as I said that I fully expected something bad to happen but here we come with Yuri Tillemans. This could be the game if we get this right and it is the game 2-0 now in the first half of extra time. Liverpool need an absolute miracle to get back in this game now we are just over 15 minutes away from not only winning Wigan Athletic their first ever Champions League trophy but making them the world's best club ladies and gents Oh, wow, that's just happened. What the hell? I cannot believe that's just happened. That literally came from absolutely nothing. Alfie Divine is on the ball. We're going to try and find Marcus Edwards, who is offside. But I don't know what's just happened there. Is that the full-time whistle? I think it is. Wigan Athletic are the champions of Europe. We are the best team in England and also the world's best club. Our seven-season journey with Wigan comes to an end, man. We've absolutely smashed it with them. We've created an absolute monster. We took them from League One to the Premier League to the top of the goddamn world, ladies and gents. But that is our job done with Wigan Athletic. But don't worry, if you enjoyed that, you should definitely click here to watch me do this with Bolton Wanderers.